We're going to start our llama project by drawing our llama out using shapes and then connecting them to get a llama. So I'm going to grab my pencil and my shape template that has the shape stencils and I'm going to start mapping out where my llama will be on my page. I'm going to find the oval for our head and I'm starting in the middle of my paper and when I get my shape where I want it, I'm going to press my pencil up against the edge of the stencil to tr draw that shape onto the paper. Next is the neck, and llamas have really long necks. So I'm just going to kind of make a mark with my pencil to give me an idea of how long I want my neck. If you want to make a really straight line, you can use the edge of your shape stencil to make a straight line, or you can sketch it freehand. Llamas have really large bodies, so we're going to use a rectangle to map out the shape of the llama's body. I'm going to go down from the line where the llama's neck is, straight line, and then I'm going to go over in a horizontal straight line, and I'm just going to make a giant rectangle type shape. Then for the legs, we can use diagonals and straight lines to make it look like our llama is standing or walking. I'm going to do a diagonal line down and then over and use a zigzag for the llama's foot. And then I'm going to switch to a straight line. Remember, your legs do not have to look like mine. I'm choosing to make mine look like my llama is in the middle of walking. When our legs are done, then we can go back and add our ears and our llama's eye. So for the ears, we can use a triangle to inspire our ear shape, and they're a little floppy, so it's okay if it's not perfect. Now that our llama's body has been sketched out with shapes, we're going to grab a Sharpie, and we're going to be using a variety of lines to give our llama the idea of having a certain texture. I'm gonna take my Sharpie, and I'm gonna go along the lines I drew with a zigzag or with a bumpy or wavy line so that my llama looks like it has fur. Whichever line you choose is up to you. And you can trace your pencil marks and it's okay if you go on the outside of your pencil or on the inside a little bit because now the Sharpie is deciding exactly how we want our llama to look. We're gonna get rid of those pencil lines later. I'm not gonna make my zigzag super boxy or a rectangle. I'm gonna curve it around as I reach the corners so that my llama's body does look a little more realistic instead of going just straight down like my llama is a full box. But as we saw, our llamas are really long and their bodies are really big. I'm going to go back and I'm going to start up at the ears and then go ahead and do the head of the llama and then finish adding some details get the nose in, color it in with the Sharpie, and then next I'm gonna do the eye. I'm gonna use a circle. You can make your llama's eye however you would like, that's your artistic choice. And then I'm gonna continue using my zigzag line to go ahead and draw the rest of the fur on my llama's body. Your Sharpie can follow your pencil line exactly, or this is your chance to change and modify as your Sharpie's in control and it's making the permanent mark that will determine your llama's body and shape and fur texture. All right, the moment I know we've all been waiting for. We can finally grab an eraser to clean up our drawing and get rid of all of those pencil marks that we don't wanna see anymore. Our Sharpie lines are the only thing that should be on our paper in this stage of our llama project. We're going to go ahead, get an eraser, and get rid of anything we don't want on our paper. Now it's time to get the oil pastels out so we can give our llama color and make its fur look more furry. Now llamas come in colors that are neutral, so in different shades and tones of white, browns, and blacks. So we can use any of those oil pastels and you can pick whichever one you want to pick. Light brown, dark brown, white, mix it with some brown, maybe black. 
that's up to you. Picking which color you want your llama is one of your artistic choices in this project. Make sure that when you're using your oil pastel, you're pressing pretty firmly, not super hard, but enough to get the pastel all in the spots that you want to add color. Make sure you're taking your time as you go around the parts that are a little bit smaller and filling in all the spaces with whatever color you choose. Remember, when we're coloring, we don't want any bald spots or any gaps of the areas that we are filling in. I am in super speed motion for helping move along in this video, so make sure you're taking your time and doing your best work. Now that we've finished our llama, it's time to add detail to the background. We don't want our llama to float, so we're going to be adding a horizon line in order to establish the background in our picture. So I'm going to start at the edge of my paper and I'm going to take my oil pastel all the way to where my llama is and then it stops there. I'm going to pick it up and go to the other side and continue that straight horizontal line all the way to the edge of the paper. So now I have a ground and a sky in my picture. What you choose to put in your ground and in your sky is your artistic choice. That's up to you to decide what colors you want to use if you want to use patterns, and if you want to draw a picture that shows where your llama is. Art tells a story, so tell your llama's story by deciding what will be in your background. 